Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India I welcome you all to the fifth lecture of uh, this NPTEL MOOC course titled uh, Psychology of Stress, Health and Wellbeing. So, in the today's lecture we will talk about the concept of stress and infectious diseases. So, before we talk about today's lecture, let us have a brief recap of the lecture number 4. So, in the last lecture, we uh, talked about the historical background of stress and health research. So, basically, you know, uh, we discussed how stress is connected to the physical health particularly and uh, we, uh, we, we have seen that uh, stress can lead to various physical and mental health consequences and we typically try to understand, you know, that this connection between stress and health can be understood from the uh, the mind body interaction perspective uh, where the idea is you know uh, the recent researches have shown that mind and body are not separate entities rather they are kind of one unit constantly interacting with each other and uh, this mind body interaction was very clearly evident uh, when we have discussed the biological aspect of stress and it was very clear how the mental experiences of the stress influences our brain and then brain in turn influences various endocrine glands and secretes hormones and uh, which has uh, then which leads to other consequences. In the context of this mind body connection and the stress and health we have also discussed psychosomatic diseases uh, where the idea is these are category of disease where you know that there are physical symptoms but uh, the causes may lie in the mental factors or at least mental factors may deteriorate or worsen those physical diseases. So, we have many diseases in such categories such as heart diseases, diabetes, etcetera, etcetera. Uh, then we have discussed and also there are certain branches we talked about like health psychology, you know, psychoneuroimmunology, mind body medicine, all these are basically a, you know, uh, huge area of researches in in themselves and they are founded on the idea of mind body interaction and connection. Then we have discussed uh, you know pathways linking stress and health where we have we try to understand uh, that stress influences physical health particularly through two mechanisms. Uh, one is physiological mechanisms and uh, where basically you know stress causes various physiological changes and which in turn ultimately causes physical diseases and the, the next the other pathway is through behavioral changes where you know under stressful circumstances there are many behavioral changes that people experience you know uh, such as you no know, increasing unhealthy behaviors decreasing healthy behaviors there are changes in the behavioral patterns such as you know uh, there are sleep problems you know there are uh, issues with the food intake uh, smoking, alcohol intake, all these issues which are uh, frequently associated with the stress can also further deteriorate physical health. So, these are primarily two mechanisms uh, that can influence uh, health uh, specifically when we are undergoing stressful circumstances. And then we have discussed you know uh, particularly how stress is connected with the non-infectious diseases where diseases which happens because of some malfunctioning in certain organs of our body and uh, in that context we have discussed uh, cardiovascular diseases uh, which are primarily connected with you know uh, you know 
stressful experiences and we have discussed you know uh, uh, primarily you know stress causes various wear and tear when there are frequently flight fight and flight response you know it causes wear and tear in the muscles of the uh, heart and also you know uh, uh, the stress hormones leads promotes atherosclerosis which is basically blockage of the arteries of the heart and uh, stress also increases cholesterol level in the blood which also further leads to the blockage of uh, arteries and uh, and stressful uh, certain behavioral changes such as you know unhealthy eating unhealthy foods and other thing uh, all these factors can lead to uh, you know cardiovascular diseases particularly uh, heart diseases we have also discussed in that context type a and type b uh, personality types which are also connected to heart disease and uh, type a people are typically you know highly competitive achievement oriented there is a time urgency they also may uh, you know anger particularly maybe suppressed anger and hostility so those kind of makeup of type a people and type b are just opposite uh, they are very easy going and relaxed people so because of the uh, typical characteristics of type a people they are more likely to experience stress as a result research shows they are more vulnerable for uh, you know stress related uh, diseases such as heart disease uh, <clears throat> so these are some of the uh, things that we have discussed in the last lecture today we'll talk about stress and health particularly infectious diseases in the context of infectious uh, diseases so in this lecture we'll discuss uh, the concept of human immune system how stress is connected to immune system what are the mechanisms of stress influencing immune system and what are the implications of this research or findings so we'll look into all these things in today's lecture so infectious diseases as we have already discussed in the last class is basically those category of diseases uh, which are caused by external agents such as bacteria and viruses and uh, you know uh, and they particularly influence our immune system so if the if your immune system is strong you may be less influenced but if your immune system is weak then they are more likely to influence our body and cause diseases and these are mostly communicable diseases in the sense that you know uh, this kind of diseases uh, may get transferred from one person to another person because it is basically you know caused by external agents who can be transferred from one person to another person so that is why you know they are called infectious diseases or communicable diseases now stress can influence infectious diseases uh, by influencing our immune system so an uh, interdisciplinary field of research uh, or field of area of research uh, which is called as uh, psycho neuroimmunology uh, which is relatively recent not very recent but relatively recent uh, you know or origin and this field of research uh, particularly looks into this aspect where uh, the studies this relationship between psychological factors neurological factors and immune system how psychological factor influences our nerve, nervous system and then how nervous system in turn influences our immune system so they try to see all these relationships uh, so uh, so this area of research is uh, you know very uh, very you uh, know uh, important to understand the connection between stress and immune system interestingly uh, the birth of this whole area of research called psycho neuroimmunology was an accidentally uh, you know uh, was a result of an accidental research finding so uh, this two person in 1970s uh, adder and cohen you know they were doing an experiment of classical conditioning and they were studying taste aversion using rats as their subjects 
So, uh, before we can understand this whole research, uh, let me give you a brief introduction of what is classical uh, conditioning, so that you will understand uh, this phenomena of, of basically what is their research is all about and how it led to the birth of uh, psycho neuroimmunology. So, uh, classical conditioning is basically learning by associating, learning through association in a very simpler term. So, many learning happens by associating two things. So, by associating two things you may learn a new response. So, that is that can be called as a conditioned response. So, you will understand this uh, I just I will briefly you know give you an uh, you know that ex experiment that was done by Ivan Pavlov who was a Russian physiologist uh, who first discovered this classical conditioning uh, phenomena and uh, he was initially doing research with dogs and how he came to this phenomena uh, was also very interesting. So, he was uh, doing research with the dogs uh, basically physiological aspects of dog and in their experiment what they found is that you know if you get, give a good food, food that is for example, in the context of dog let us say meat powder. When a dog sees meat powder, if you present meat powder in front of dog, uh, the natural response is you know production of saliva in the mouth. So, this is meat powder is an unconditioned stimulus. So, it is not conditioned, it is a natural response that happens. So, this is called as you know unconditioned stimulus. Now, what he did Pavlov, he introduced a neutral stimulus such as the sound of bell. Now, this is a neutral stimulus. So, if you just produce sound of bell in front of a dog, it will not respond in terms of particularly you know, production of saliva or anything. It is a neutral thing and dog is not really concerned about the sound of bell. So, there is no saliva production. Okay. So, this is a neutral stimulus because it is not uh, you know, stimulating any specific response. Now, what he did? He associated these two things paired again and again and he tried to see what happens, you know. So, he produced bell plus So, he associated these two stimuli, one is sound of bell and immediately after that he produced meat powder. So, by seeing meat powder, the dog, you know, there was a production of saliva in the mouth of dog. So, the dog was salivating. So, this was associated again and again and what happened after some trials of association, they found interestingly just production of bell. or sound of bell you know led to the production of saliva in the mouth of dog which was not there in the before conditioning before conditioning when sound of bell was not producing any uh, response in terms of production of saliva so this is called as basically you know conditioned response conditioned response. So, this is a new learned response happened because of classical conditioning because of learning by associating two things. So, before conditioning bell was not leading to the production of saliva uh, because uh, it was not particularly stimulating you know the taste bud of the dog. But when meat powder was associated with the sound of bell again and again the dog learned a new response that the production of sound of bell meat powder is going to come and that signals production of saliva.
in the mouth of the dog and as a result just sound of bell without production of you know meat also created the same response as meat powder would produce so it is a new learned response simply happened because of association of two stimuli the dog learned a new response that is producing saliva to a neutral stimuli so this is called as conditioned response or new learned response so this is a uh, by and large the paradigm of you know uh, classical conditioning and such classical conditioning also happens in the human lives also for example many fear responses that we learn are kind of associated with uh, learned by association you know uh, so for example no if you met an accident uh, by a car so there is a possibility that whenever next time you you know ride a car automatically there will be a fear response because you learn to associate car with accidents so it is possible so many fear responses in human lives could be classically conditioned so they were doing a similar kind of experiment uh, using rats and trying to see the taste aversion among the rats so this was the experiment which was not really directly connected to the you know immune system or anything so what they did was you know a researcher uh, gave rats a saccharin solution saccharin solution is basically sweet sugar kind of solution which is sweet taste you know and it is generally you know if you pr pr produce it you know if you give it to a rat they will love to eat, drink it so so they were creating a test aversion to saccharin which was generally preferred by the rats so i'll just show it in diagram and then we'll discuss so and then what they associated this saccharin uh, solution uh, with an injection of a chemical called cyclophosphamide so they gave saccharin solution and then at the after that they injected rats with this particular chemical which had or drug which had an two impact one was this drug was drug induced a gastrointestinal upset so basically they were feeling like vomiting those kind of intestinal upset was created by this drug and there was another effect of this drug was that this drug used to suppress immune system to some extent so when this saccharin solution was given to the rat along with this injection of drug they learned to avoid saccharin so they learned a new response whose saccharin which they earlier used to prefer now when it was associated with a drug which caused stomach upset then after that they learned to avoid saccharin solution because of association with a uh, drug which caused problem or uh, stomach problem so if you just uh, show it you will i will show it just like that so so saccharin solution if you generally give to a rat they generally you know prefer or rat generally prefer the taste of it now when so this was kind of natural you no know, response now when so they another thing was uh, the drug which was called as cyclo now it does two thing one is gastrointestinal upset plus
so this was this two function is to be done by this thing. so when the researcher combined these two again and again I mean so this was a kind of classical conditioning initially uh, as a current solution rat preferred it now when it was combined with a drug which caused stomach upset the rat avoid learn to avoid it so this is a classical conditioning or of a taste aversion so so this was the research that they did interestingly what they found uh, which was kind of accidental finding that when uh, this saccharin was forced fat so since they learn to avoid it but instead of that uh, in, to, in order to complete their uh, research whole protocol they forced fed them by using a dropper you know they avoided it but still the researcher forced fed this saccharin solution uh, the interesting um, they kind of found that you know many uh, rats actually died after this force feeding thing so this was kind of an unusual finding just just by feeding saccharin how could a rat die you know so they hypothesized that it is possible that you know the saccharin was conditioned not just to the in gastrointestinal upset so because of that they learned to avoid it uh, so there was an upset so they learned to avoid saccharin but also the other effect of the drug which was suppression of immune system so it was possible that you know rat also classically conditioned to the suppression of immune system of that drug so saccharin was conditioned to that functions of the uh, that suppression of immune system of of the drug was also conditioned to the saccharin so when saccharin was given or forced fed uh, many rats died and the the amount uh, and it was dependent uh, dependent on the amount of solution that was given higher the amount was given higher the death rate so it was kind of they hypothesized uh, that you know not just gastrointestinal you know upset was conditioned to the saccharin but the immune suppression was also kind of conditioned to the saccharin so when saccharin was given to them force fed to them uh, there was a signal in the you know in the brain or the nervous system of the uh, rat that you know uh, rat and which kind of suppress the immune system which was earlier done by that drug so it was learned by association now saccharin was almost acting like you know the qualities or the characteristics of that particular drug so so now you will be able to understand uh, some of this uh, what is written in the slide so the the researcher they were giving rats a saccharin solution which was sweet test accompanied by injection of cyclophosphamide uh, which had an immunosuppressive impact along with in, in it induces gastrointestinal upset so when this injection was stopped the rats start or had become conditioned to avoid con consuming the sweet solution so when it was stopped the rat learned to avoid it simply because of association with that drug to complete the experimental protocol you know this researcher forced the rat to take the saccharin solution using eye drops so forcefully fed and the surprisingly they found or observation they made was that some of these rats had which were force fed they died with the saccharin solution alone only by giving saccharin solution they were died and they also found that the magnitude of the avoidance response 
and the mortality rate of the rat was directly related to the volume of the solution consumed. So, the as the volume of the solution increased in terms of force feeding them, their avoidance response and their uh, the mortality rate was also in proportion to that. So, they hypothesized that conditioning of immunosuppressive effect was happening in addition to the conditioning of the taste avoidance response. So, their kind of double conditioning happened. So, they added that the taste of saccharin alone was enough to stimulate neural signals that suppress the rat's immune system, uh, just as they had been as over overdose with the immunosuppressant. So, as if saccharin was acting like as if they were given no, uh, high dose of immune suppression, suppressive drugs. They later found that behavioral conditioning process could suppress immune response as measured by you know antibody concentrations you know revealing connections between the brain and immune system and the later obviously they found many research confirmed even in animals and humans that in that in fact uh, the psychological factors uh, can you know signal uh, particularly the negative emotions and the stress can signal brain to suppress immune system so we'll see some of the later findings now so, before we understand how stress impact immune system, let us briefly understand what is the immune system is all about. So, immune system basically protects us from infections and illness from outside microorganisms. So, it is a kind of body's defense mechanism. So, it protects body from microorganisms, harmful substances that comes into our body. And immune system is very complex, uh, particularly in the human body, it is very complex and very sophisticated and it is a very coordinated system. So, key players in the immune system are uh, you know, white blood cells. So, blood said red blood cell, white blood cell. So, white blood cells are primarily responsible for you know immune system of the body, uh, which, which are also called as lymphocytes, so one type of white blood. Uh, lymphocytes are primarily the key player in our immune systems. So, there are mainly two types of lymphocytes, one is called as B cells and T cells, broadly you know they are uh, you know, primarily uh, serving the immune system or uh, protecting uh, our body from the outside agents. So, the, let me briefly just draw. So, we have white blood cells or particularly you know lymphocytes so they have two specific cells called b cells and then we have T cells. B cells basically, you know, they secrete antibodies. T cells are basically they recognize They recognize specific infected or cancerous cells. The B cells, whenever there is an antigen or external agent, they create an antibody to fight with that. Antibodies basically, you know, are produced in the body to fight with specific external agents. T cells, they are more specialized in terms of, you know, recognizing infected cells and cancerous cells and in terms of fighting with them. Uh, T cells are again of two types one is called as you know helper cells helper t cells and then we have killer t cells
helpers are also they are called as cd4 cells and they are called as cd8 cells so helper t cells are uh, basically you know they coordinate immune response killer t cell they directly attack cells carrying foreign materials so these are major you know uh, immune system uh, the cells which are responsible for immune functions uh, so primarily the lymphocyte component of the white blood cells uh, they have again two types of cell one is b cells which secretes antibodies in response to external agents to fight with and t cells are basically they are specifically they uh, uh, recognize some specific cells such as cancerous cells or infected cells and they kind of attack and t cells are again two types one is helper t cells which basically you know kind of coordinate uh, immune response from different parts of the body uh, so they kind of you know sends messages and coordinates killer uh, cells are basically they directly attack whenever they find some infected you know uh, cells carrying some foreign harmful material so the uh, as we have already discussed you know b cell secretes antibodies into the body fluids to destroy antigens uh, each b cell produce specific antibody uh, when triggered by an antigen so it can recognize free floating antigen t cells uh, they recognize specific infected or cancerous cells uh, then t cells are of two types uh, one is helper t cells and killer t cells helper t cells they are also known as cd4 cells uh, they coordinate immune response by communicating with other cells so this coordination purpose uh, they do so that wherever you know whatever resource is required they kind of coordinate killer t cells uh, they are also called as you know cytotoxic t lymphocytes or cd8 cells uh, they directly attack other cells carrying certain foreign or abnormal molecules on their surfaces the other ma major component include natural killer cells phagocytes and cytokines we will not go into too much of that aspects so but these are major you know components of immune system important organ where these are these are the storehouse of immune cells are bone marrow so inside bone we have soft tissues their majority of the uh, immune cells are you know kind of concentrated there thymus another organ which lies behind the breastbone and spleen which is a flattened organ at the upper left of the uh, abdomen so uh, these are the organs where the immune cells are primarily concentrated in our body and that is you know uh, bone marrow thymus and spleen now we'll talk about some of the research findings related to uh, stress and immune system so hans selly suggested you know that we have already seen uh, in the discussion of you know general adaptation syndrome hans selly in uh, 70s uh, he suggested that you know stress actually globally suppresses our immune system you know globally means all functions of immune system and he proposed in one of the first model of you know general adaptation syndrome and he uh, found that in the stage of exhaustion which is the la third stage of general ad adaptation syndrome that the body runs out of the reserve energy you know when it is there is uh, the body is under chronic stress the body runs out of the reserve uh, energy and immunity of the body is deteriorated at this stage and it causes various diseases and even in you know it it may cause death so 
Hanseli in the, in, the, in the 70s he talked about how stress is connected to uh, immune system particularly under chronic stress you know in the third stage of exhaustion immune system deteriorates. So, many early studies have supported Sally's finding you know uh, or findings uh, by reporting association of chronic stress with you know decrease in uh, many uh, immune cells such as natural killer cell suppression of lymphocyte response. So, overall various immune functions or cells uh, were suppressed by stress it was found by many or many studies also later after Sally's uh, initial finding. In the early 1980s you know uh, another kind of study that very clearly reflects how stress can influence our immune system was conducted by uh, Janice Kekold Glasser and he was a psychologist and another immunologist Ronald Glasser and they were studying how any uh, spe especially they were doing research with the animals initially and uh, they f uh, and they got intrigued by those researches that linked stress with infection that how infection you know kind of increases under stress. So, they were doing a lot of research in that connection and they from 1982 through 1992 so 10 year uh, you know, uh, time they studied medical students and they found that students immunity went down every year under the simple stress of the three day exam period. So, they found consistently that you know in, the, in, in medical students uh, during the period of their exam particularly three day exam period you know uh, immune system of most of the students went down during those period. Students had less number of natural killer cells which uh, fights tumors and viral infections they also had fewer infection fighting t cells so there was also another study that shows how under stress particularly during the exam period suddenly the stress rises and they found uh, that with the rise of that stress many immune cell functions were suppressed uh, another study in uh, by pressman and cohen in 2005 you know found that social isolation and feelings of loneliness each independently weakened first year students immunity. So, uh, students immunity particularly social isolation because when a first year student they come mostly they do not have too many friend circles and the social isolation and feelings of loneliness uh, also actually weakened their immune system. And uh, we know that you know social support is very important in terms of reducing stress. So, it is an important coping strategy uh, that we will discuss in the cope when we discuss the coping strategies in the upcoming lectures. So, loneliness and social isolations are most of the time associated with higher intensity of stress and higher number of stressful circumstances. So, that also indirectly you know kind of shows. Uh, uh, so, uh, in this study basically you know uh, the students were uh, no basically checked their social networks and they, it, it was kind of uh, they also provided you know saliva samples for measuring levels of stress hormone particularly the cortisol can be measured from the saliva sample and uh, the, they found the small network and loneliness each independently weakened immunity. Uh, and also the immune response was most weakened by the combination of loneliness and small social network. When these two are present together obviously and it had the highest impact. And it was a kind of most obvious thing for the first year students because when they just join you know obviously their social networks was small social support system was small. Uh, so, all this increase their stress and ultimately their immune system also. Now, many studies actually uh, conducted uh, you know and it kind of a flood gate of research opened in 80s and 90s particularly after research of Glasser and Glasser and Hansel is finding. Uh, so, another um, uh, uh, you know findings by Dhabar and McQueen uh, 
they proposed a model based on findings from various researches uh, the model called as biphasic model which takes into account of different types of stress and how different types of stress influences our immune response not just stress in general but is it that you know different types of stress influences our immune system differently so this model states that you know based on the evidences uh, uh, they stated that acute stress enhances while chronic stress suppresses immune system so this biphasic model proposed that you know actually the acute stress which is for short term which is you know like you know just after you know when you see a danger or threat you experience fight or flight response so in that phase actually immune system actually increases in the body uh, which is done by redistribution of the immune cells because body gets prepared and it redistributes immune cells throughout the body and enhances immune function however when the stress becomes chronic for a long time uh, so let's say you know weeks and months somebody is experiencing stress such stress actually are the main culprit in terms of you know uh, suppression of immune system so chronic stress exhausts resources and weakens immune system so if you just look at it you know uh, we have discussed at different times so so we can divide it into acute and chronic so actually this you know seems to increase immune functions this decreases immune function this was a kind of general uh, finding they found uh, that depending on the type of stress immune functions could be you know uh, there can be a differential impact on that so in 2004 uh, two researcher uh, segarstrom and miller in 2004 they conduct an, an extensive meta analysis so meta analysis basically is it's an analysis of the already analyzed studies so it's an analysis of the analysis that is why it is called as a meta analysis so all already existing uh, empirical studies you know ab about about 293 independent studies and uh, which reported the connection between stress and health and uh, stress and immune system sorry uh, and they uh, which were studies from 1960 to 2001 so these were the st studies they collected and they did an analysis of all these studies and they tried to see what is the direction of results so analysis of the results confirmed that you know stress changes immune system immune functions so that was very clear the result of the meta analysis was in line with the proposition of the biphasic model which proposed that you know that short term stress or acute stress may actually enhance immune functions as an adaptive response uh, but chronic stress actually uh, suppresses immune function as a result of too much exhaustion of the body resources so that their finding was in line with the biphasic model that was proposed however also they made you know very finer analysis more specifically they found that you know acute time limited stressors you know such as public speaking it's a very time limited acute stress for a particular time enhance natural immunity that is defensive again, again non-specific foreign invaders so general immunity was enhanced by such activities however some aspects of specific immunity attack specific invaders which were you know were suppressed so general uh, natural immunity was increased but some specific immunity was suppressed by acute time limited stressors uh, such as public speaking they also found that focal stressful events such as natural disaster or loss of spouse was not that strongly associated with immune ch changes when taken as a whole uh, but they found specific categories such as loss of a spouse was associated with 
decline in natural immune response. Overall, it was not that strongly connected, but you know it was associated with the decline in natural immune response, focal events such as natural disaster. And they found chronic stressors such as living with a handicap, dementia caregiving and unemployment have negative effects on almost all measures of immune functions, both natural and specific immunity, irrespective of demographic variables such as age, gender, etc. So, this is the category which is most you know damaging to our immune system, chronic stress for months and years you are experiencing stress and you do not see an end to it when such an you know when it is going to end. So, such stressful uh, stressful circumstances are uh, the, the mostly the mostly you know has a negative impact on our immune system. Further this meta analysis also showed that older and sick people are more vulnerable to stress related immune changes. And obviously, because older and you know sick people are already you know their their immune system is already compromised, you know it is not functioning at its peak. So, any further changes or de uh, decline in that can be highly you know highly disastrous in terms of health. So, research shows all these kinds of findings and it was clear that you know stress has an impact on our immune system. Uh, now, the question is what is the mechanisms by which uh, stressful circumstances or stressful experiences uh, impacts our immune system. So, one obvious uh, finding is obviously uh, stress hormones are the uh, you know, linking mechanism between stress and immune function. So, the relationship between stress and immune function is very complex obviously and uh, this is what we still do not know most of it, uh, but at least whatever we know shows there is an impact. Uh, and many mechanisms are yet to be discovered. However, uh, research indicated that, that stress hormones uh, and the pathways we have already discussed in detail such as cortisol, epinephrine or adrenaline and norepinephrine or noradrenaline. Uh, these stress hormones can make us more resistant to stressor in short term like acute stress. Uh, it enhances immune function to protect the body, but they actually impair immune system in long term. So, chronic stress under the condition of chronic stress they impairs our immune function. For example, you know Talbot and Kremer in 2007 found that you know one stress hormone that is cortisol. Uh, they found that you know cortisol hinders the production as well as the activity of white blood cells. So, all the immune functions cells on the hinders their functioning in the production. So, in that way it decreases you know and cortisol you might remember it is primarily released in terms of chronic stress. Then cortisol also suppresses white blood cells to produce chemical messenger that facilitate communication with other immune cells. So, it also suppresses this you know communication between immune cells also and so in that way also it hinders immune functions. Uh, cortisol can also signal many immune cells to shut and stop working. So, it can you know shut and stop, it can signal and you know reduce the production and functioning of uh, different kinds of immune cells. So, this is these are some of the indication that how stress hormones can be related to uh, the suppression of immune function. And obviously, there are behavioral pathways uh, apart from these hormones. Uh, research also indicated that you know behavioral component uh, which which is always associated with the stressful experience can have a detriment, detrimental effect on uh, immune functions, particularly the behavioral uh, aspects of stress such as you know excessive drinking of al alcohol lack of exercise, inactivity, sleep difficulties, these are all connected with the decrease in the production of immune functions or decrease in the immune functions. So, stress can directly reduce immune function or suppress immune function through release of stress hormones or indirectly by behavioral changes which further has a detrimental effect on 
immune function. So, what are the implications of these research findings? So, one thing is clear stressful circumstances decreases immune function. So, if then uh, if that is the case, one implication of this finding is that if you do something or some intervention which reduces stress or which relaxes us or any intervention that increases a relaxation response because relaxation is opposite to stress. You know? So, if stress decreases immune function, so if we increase the relaxation response or some intervention which has a positive impact on our emotional or mental health that should increase our immune function you know and in fact many studies are started uh, you know have to indicate researches in that direction so uh, one important implication of these findings are that you know interventions aimed at stress reduction uh, such as uh, particularly chronic stress such as relaxation emotion regulation social support etc may actually you know decrease immune uh, suppression function and actually increase immune function in terms of fighting germs. And some research indicate that a relaxation response may actually elicit this or kind of you know induce product uh, secretion of some chemicals which are health promoting such as you know DHEA which basically means dehydro efendrosterone uh, which kind of promotes health. So, relaxation response actually secretes such helpful chemicals and further the use of self regulation technique that calms the mind lowers the activity of sympathetic nervous system response to stress and promotes healing process. So, relaxation response overall you know calms down the body and you know and it has it seems to have positive impact on our immune function also. For example, you know in this year only very recently one meta analysis was done on uh, on 56 studies or randomized trials which had about more than 4000 4, participants in it and they found that psychosocial interventions such as cognitive behavior therapy were associated with the positive changes in the immune system over time including improvements in the beneficial immune system functions. So, so it indicates that at least you know. So any intervention to reduce stress and increase our mental and emotional health can actually increase immune function, and it is shown by you know a meta-analysis and you know, the many studies kinds of indicate towards that. And this enhanced immune system is not short term actually, and it actually persisted for at least six months following those treatments for participants. So it is it is a long lasting effect also. So, generally what happens the psychotherapies are aimed at reducing stress and it enhances our emotional and mental health and such intervention actually uh, not only promotes our mental and emotional health, they also actually increase our immune functions in terms of physical health. So, therefore, uh, this studies indicates that you know stress management and working towards increasing our emotional health can increase our immune functions and these immune functions could be long lasting also. So, uh, these are some of the important findings and implication of those findings in the context of you know connection between stress and immune functions and stress and infectious diseases. So, you can understand stress has so much role to play in our physical health not just mental health. We will talk about mental health in the next you know uh, lecture. So, it has such an important implications for both kinds of disorders, physical diseases, infectious as well as non-infectious diseases. So, we need to understand you know uh, the importance of uh, our mental experiences particularly negative emotions and stress and uh, we will see more how to deal with that in the coping strategies sections when we discuss in the upcoming classes. So, with this uh, I end today's lecture. Thank you.